Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, it's FakeXTerra here, and today I'm doing a bit of a different video. We're going to be looking at how to win, or how to achieve, a domination victory in Civ 6. So, most of you will know by now, but just for some of the newer players. Uh, so, the first thing you need to look at is how to actually win it. Now, some of the newer players don't understand that you don't actually have to conquer every city on the map, or every city of a sieve you just actually have to take the main capital of the rival nation and then once that's all done you achieve the victory so next we're going to look at some of the sieves that is easier to win on domination we'll look at alexander the great of macedon has a great early game a great early wars with his hyperpis and his heteroi units both come very early which once you achieve them, gives you an advantage over the others and also has a unique building which gives him more experience for certain types of units. The next save we'll be looking at to use is Simon or Simon Bolivar of Gran Colombia. He's great at wars as he has a special boost to the movement of every unit and also promotions don't end the turns. So when you need to promote you get an extra turn so you can still move, you can still attack. And also has the ability to earn a commandante general in every area which you know boost the attacking and has each of them have different you know sort of boosts and all that and finally have the Hanero which is a special unit replaced the cavalry which is quite strong and also the more they are side by side the more damage they do I believe and then finally we'll look at Shaka of Zulu so has an Isabonga that increases the loyalty when a unit is garrisoned in a city oh, sorry. and then also conquer a city with a unit upgrades them to are a corpse or an army depending on the time uh, of the era you do it and also a special district which means it's fa faster to create corps and armies and finally the, se the special unit they have is the MP, where it's cheaper to maintain and it's actually faster and it's just stronger so the first thing to do when you settle it is to sort of look at your research get used to it understand what you're going to plan ahead? Are you going to go get your boost to go kill kill a barbarian with a slinger to get your archery? Are you going to focus on getting, you know, your spearmen, then onto your man of arms, battering rams, all that? And also as well, if you're playing someone like Alexander, who has their units extremely early, their special units, obviously you don't start with them, but like, you know, you get them quite early. Make sure to, you know, play around when you get them as they'll be stronger than the counterparts. And a little trick as well, if at the start you are looking for your enemies or your opposition so you want to invade when you put a settler down you can actually see if they're loyalty per turn if there's an opposing city nearby as you can see here but then obviously you won't actually you don't actually have to see them you can just do that without seeing them the next thing we'll be looking at is the actual loyalty when attacking and taking over cities the easiest way to impact this is with a garris with garrison in a unit inside this city, which increases the loyalty. And then another way to do that is because sometimes it isn't enough to actually keep them, is to use governors. So the best governor is Victor, which has the ability to garrison commander, and it can help keep loyalty if you place them in one of your cities nearby or in a city you've captured if you're taken to more cities. So that means it only works on, as you can see, other cities. So sometimes it's best to actually take two cities quickly rather than just focus on one of the big ones. And finally, the last way to increase your loyalty is of government cards, such as the Limitane card, which increases loyalty by two if a city has a garrison unit, and later on you unlock the Praetorium, which gives an extra two loyalty for governor situated in the city. So actually the army building. Some people build an army, attack, take out a sieve, and then actually just delete the army. Or like don't, you know, use a lot of them, kill some units because of the gold maintenance. But keeping them is very important. Because when you can actually upgrade them, they actually keep that all the way through and having that upgrades can do quite a lot because actually like seven combat strength can mean that even if they're like an era behind the upgrades they can still do a lot of damage and it's a bad idea just you know get them gone keep the same you want because the same warrior you actually start off with you can keep upgrading all the way to the end to be a mechanized infantry at the max level meaning it's so much harder than any new infantry that's just spawned and even like bombards you, know, you can shoot from have you know shoot twice rather than once that gives so much more advantages advantage compared to others so if you lean into the power spikes now when obviously you get your special unit you get an earlier research on a tech before the civs 
that gives you such big power spike. You have to play around those, especially on the harder difficulties. It becomes so much harder to play around them. So make sure you do well with them and really pay attention to what's going on. Because if you have a 1v1 with your unit compared to the others, you know, if you've got the next up new tech of a, I don't know, a s archer instead of a slinger, there's so much more damage there, so much better. And obviously be very careful because you might not understand all the civs yet, but make sure to find out what their special unit is because if they get it the same era, you think you've got the power spike. You actually don't. And if you are still behind then on that power spike, you'll be nearly too behind on it and you do so little damage to the whole thing. So, for the conclusion, start picking easy civ, make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure to train up a decently sized army, you know, get your archers, maybe even a battering ram if it's got walls, a siege tower later on. And obviously as it goes further and further, just keep up to date with that. Loyalty is a massive thing, so make sure you get the right governors. Make sure you have the loyalty cards on your governments if you can, so make sure you pick those. Because that can mean the difference from taking a city and losing a city. And free cities can be a pain in the ass if they're not done right. And then, yeah, keep your army upgraded. Keep producing. Keep upgrading. And, yeah, power spikes. And if you do all that right, you'll be great and you'll achieve this. Though its face may change throughout the ages... History is written from the hand of the victim. By your actions this day, you ensure our people a glorious tomorrow.